All right. There's so much stuff. I'm really trying not to cut my head off, but I got to squat. I got to kind of squat so you can see me. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really excited to be here, guys. I got my phone up just to make sure that I can actually hear myself. Perfect. We're working. Great. The smoothest a start to one of these live chats has gone so far. These live streams have been kind of a mess. Uh, take full responsibility for that. Um, I'm not going to stay in this position all night, uh, but I really want to bask in the glory of this little beautiful setup right here, at least for a moment. Uh, I'm ready for it true, Trevor. It's going to be a good time. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Uh, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback to these you know, live streams I'm doing on a weekly basis every Sunday. If you're new to the show, thanks so much for joining. Um, thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. You know, if you've never watched the channel before or you only see a couple episodes, please, I encourage you every Wednesday, every Friday, new videos come out. And then Sundays, every evening on a Sunday, I'm here. Uh, probably not doing this <laughs> every Sunday or else I will need help and probably a trainer because I will gain a lot of weight. Um, what we have here today is 12 different pours of Knob Creek that I'm going to put into these glasses, um, give a taste, see what I think, try to pick a winner. See, now this is me standing up. Ah, it cuts off my head just a little bit, but I want to be able to read the chat. I want to be able to communicate with you guys. So I may just have to squat, get some exercise in, you know, we'll get there. Okay. So before I get started into anything, let me just say that these glasses are my glasses. Rink Pro. It's so exciting to be able to make these. That was super freaking cool. I'm so happy people have been buying these. If you want one of these glasses, hit me up social media, thedrinkpro at gmail.com, wherever you can get a hold of me. Call me, text me if you got my number. I'm not going to give that out here, but if you've got it, reach out. Um, I want everybody who wants one of these to get one of these. There are a lot of fun to, you know, have a glass with some branding on it, somebody you know, somebody you support. Uh, it's a great conversation piece, and it helps me out a lot, and I like them. Uh, it turned out pretty well. So I've got some more coming in the future uh, for one of the branded groups. i got a couple people in here that are from the I Drink and I Know Things whiskey group on Facebook. Uh, shout out Josh, who is the head of that group. They've been really good to me. They're one of the reasons I'm doing this in the first place. Um, Josh is pretty active on Instagram. Uh, I think his handle is Whiskey and Grams 2. I don't want to get that wrong. Uh, I may post that in the discussion after I post this video. Actually, you know what? I'll just throw up uh, something on my Facebook and on my Instagram, uh, just shouting him out to make sure you all know. If you want to find that group, you can find it. Joe's 100% right. It is a great group. Um, I will tell you, because of how my setup is right now, I'm on a tiny monitor to see myself and your chat. So if I don't see you posting a comment. I won't know you're here. Uh, I see I have nine people here. I don't know who all you are. I know Trevor's here. I know Joe's here. The other seven could be whomever. Um, whoever you are, thank you for being here. If you want to remain anonymous and don't want to chat, that's totally fine. I, you know, make this the experience you want it to be. But if you want to engage, feel free. I like, I very much encourage and I enjoy having an active chat section, especially today because I don't have anything really specific. I'm trying to drill home. Uh, in the past, specifically last time in particular, I had a lot of things I wanted to talk about. I had a lot of points to hit home. Uh, you know, a lot of cool things are happening with the channel, but um, I've already talked about most of them. So I'm not going to feel compelled to keep drilling that stuff into y'all's heads. You know it. Uh, I trust y'all. Uh, you've been good to me so far, so I'm not going to keep pushing if I don't feel that uh, it's going to help anybody. Uh, yeah, Uncle Dave, this is going to be interesting. You're 100% right. I will point out that uh, we do have a lot of proof here. One of the things that I kind of forgot about before I lined these all up was um, the Knob Creek barrel picks are not actually at barrel strength. They, they, they proof them down to 60%. Now, I, I know there's a reason that they do that, and I think part of it is consistency's sake, but it's odd to me. Um, it's odd to me because it's so in vogue right now to not do that. Uh, they're really going the other way. They're going against the grain. Um, even more interesting to me is the Knob Creek single barrel rye that I've got is 115 proof. It's a single barrel select. This is from uh, Belmont Beverage. 
but it's 115 proof. Now, one other thing I need to address before I get into pouring all of this nonsense and drinking all of this nonsense. You see 12, well, maybe you can't see. You can see the five bottles here. You can see the two bottles here, that's seven. I got five samples down here. That gets you to the 12. But one of these is not a store pick. I miscounted the men this morning and found out that one of the uh, store picks that I thought was a Knob Creek store pick was actually a Maker's Mark store pick. That will be another video for another time. But I wanted to still do 12 whiskeys. And particularly because I have almost all bourbon, I decided I'll add another rye. So I'm adding in the Knob Creek twice barreled rye. Uh, I think this is a really solid rye. It's at 100 proof, so it's a little bit gentler than some of this other stuff. Um, what's up, Mario? Yeah, so, you know, it's going to be a, a, a fun thing to taste, especially comparing it to some of these hotter pours. But don't think I misled you intentionally. I've, I'm getting as close to 12 as I can, <laughs> making it happen some kind of way. Uh, I'm also not going to be doing full pours uh, because I don't want to die today. Um, for those of you who don't know, if you haven't used many Glencairns in the past, right to the middle of the bulb is two ounces. That's actually surprisingly, uh, you know, misjudged or misused by a lot of people who are really into whiskey. Uh, I see a lot of people pour Glencairns and they think, oh, you've got two ounces. Oh, you've got an ounce and a half. Oh, you've got three ounces. They don't realize what these look like. I've actually taken photos on my phone and sometimes I'll post these. So other people that want these Glencairns, you can buy these now. So you might as well know what it looks like. I will show you what an ounce looks like, what two ounces look like, what an ounce and a half looks like, what half an ounce looks like in these glasses. And I think the value of that is this bulb on this glass makes it really, really easy to understand your serving size. And when you're talking about alcohol and you're talking about, you know, something that can be misused, it's always good to be smart. And the easiest way to be smart is to pre-plan. If you know instinctually, all right, that's an ounce, then it's going to be way easier for you to judge how much you've had. And tonight, that's going to be really fun freaking important. So without further ado, let's start pouring some of these up. Where to begin, where to begin? I'm going to start down here and I'll go ahead and give you some of the information uh, on these picks while I walk down the line. Um, I, I will also uh, probably be needing to revisit some of that information and uh, give it to you again after I've had a couple of them. I don't expect you guys to remember. I don't expect myself to remember uh, 12 picks in a row, side by side by side, by side 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 by side. That's too many. So the first pick I've got is the Crown Liquors Barrel 7976. This is Warehouse WW. And I'm not going to go through all this on all of these. These The new barrel pick structure has really great information on the bottle if you can see some of that. Hopefully you could. Um, it tells you the warehouse, the bottles from, or the barrels from, the floor it was on, the rick it was on, when it was barreled, uh, and the bottling date. Um, I, I like having all that information. Uh, some of these samples, I have none of that information. That's okay. But it's really great to give you a sense of what you're comparing. Are these apples and apples, or is this something different? Um, one of the most well-known store pick variances as in four roses if you talk to people that are in the whiskey markets and they're spending money on a secondary they're really looking for floors five and floor six like tiers five and six and you can tell that from one of the specific numbers on the bottle you can do the same with this this says floor f-02 so i know this is from the second floor why is that important well how high in a rick house a bottle is coming from will determine how hot that space gets and how wet that space is and the moisture and the heat, the climate that you're aging your barrel in is going to have a drastic effect on what it ends up tasting like when it's done aging. And by the way, a lot of these are freaking old. Uh, this was barreled on 211, 2004 and selected on 10 to 2018. So this is 14, 14 and a half years old. And I've got several 15 years in here. Um, I'm just going to do little pours for now. It's either, always easier to add more. It's harder to, to take it out. Uh, the Knob Creek has recently just said, well, they've, they've at least sent to the federal government labeling that suggests they will be doing 15-year as a 
as, as a standard part of their line. Uh, it may be a limited run, but they're going to have a standardized, that's not a single barrel selection 15 year. Recently, there's been a ton of 15 year old uh, selections that are coming out of Knob Creek that have been really sought after, just wonderfully delicious pours. But uh, today, I don't have any uh, any of the 15 standardized. I just have store picks, and several of them are 15 years. Um, this is another thing that's kind of fun. In the new ones, they tell you the barreling dates. On these old ones, it just says age nine years. So they they have moved to give you more information, which I really appreciate. Uh, these old labels just have nothing on them in terms of info. It says what the barrel was. It says it was hand selected by Belmont Beverage. And that's really it in terms of something beyond a standardization. All of this shit is standardized, and I can't get anything from that. I don't know, uh, you know any information about how this barrel was aged, where it was in the rickhouse, how long. Um, you know, it says nine years, but it probably wasn't nine years and zero months and zero days. Uh, so how long nine years actually is, hard to say. But Belmont Beverages makes good picks. They're sort of known for good picks. So I'm not too worried about it. I expect this to be a tasty one. You can see I haven't had very much of many of these. Uh, several of you were very generous and sent in samples. Uh, several of you were, were generous and helped me get bottle access. Uh, a couple of these bottles I did not have access to before. Um, when I get to bottles that are like that, I will make a note. I wrote down everyone's name who helped me get something and I will shout you out accordingly. Uh, the Belmont Beverage one, shout out Yolanda, my girlfriend, who picked that up for me when she was on the north side of the state. So big ups to her for helping make the dream work. Cap and Cork. This is the Cap and Cork one. Now I believe, yeah, Jacob Johnson, shout out Jacob Johnson and the Naptown Bourbon Club. He's, I know he's affiliated with them. He's sold them to people at cost. Good dude. Appreciate him doing that. Um, that's the kind of thing that can really raise your bourbon karma. You help people get good bottles that are hard to find, and it can really help you out. I need to do more of that, frankly. Um, I've done some of it in the past. Um, I've had bottles that I didn't care for and discovered I didn't like, and I've sold them. You know, it, that kind of thing happens. Um, I always prefer to trade, but it's hard to trade, uh, specifically in local markets and with rarer bottles, because we have the problem of, um, you know, actually figuring out what people want and matching it to what you want. I mean, it's the reason that cash was invented is a barter economy doesn't make sense. Here's my economics degree becoming useful. Barter economies don't work because it's hard to figure out exactly what people want and you know match up the disconnect. And so they always inevitably end up using some sort of third resource that becomes a de facto currency because it's easy to transit, it's small, it's compact, it holds value, you get the point. Matter of fact, they all tied it back in. Bourbon actually began its life in the United States very much as a commodity. Bourbon was a currency for a big part of this nation's history because you had grains that you couldn't find any other use for. You made more grain than you could possibly eat. You needed a way to store it that it would last for a while, and you needed it to be something that you could carry to a market relatively easily. And guess what? Corn whiskey is a great way to do that. And so much of the early liquor market was commodity style. This is how we exchange value. Fun stuff. Sometimes my ramblings end up coming back to the bourbon again. How about that? The cap and cork one, again, this one is uh, 15 years old. 10, 20, 2005 to 9, 12, 2019, 14 year. This is Rick one in floor three, warehouse L. So a little bit higher than the first one we know more about, uh, similar age. Rural end pick. People love the rural end picks, man. These are hard to get your hands on. The most recent pick, actually, they did a uh, drawing, a lotto, based on bottles purchased at the store to figure out who would be able to get their hands on their new pick. This is the pick from before that. This was 10-14-2004 uh, to 7-8-2019, floor four, warehouse I, Rick 18. Um, I'm not going to have that information for any of these samples, by the way. So... Yeah, it might be a little annoying to hear me ramble on about it, but just believe me when I say, uh, you know, I'm giving you what, what I can because <laughs> there's going to be times that I got nothing. <laughs> and it gives me something to talk about while I'm pouring out these bottles because I know this isn't the most interesting part of the night. You guys want to see me get drunk. Oh, it smells so good, guys. I'm just going to steal a taste. Hold on. Ooh. 
just got to wet your whistle. And you know, I haven't had anything before this. And this is 60% alcohol. That's pretty high. That'll kick your ass. But um, it doesn't. These Nile Creek picks do not kick your ass the way you would expect them to, given their proof. Uh, they really, they really do a great job of being balanced, delicious pours. <sighs> Gonna stand up straight, stretch for the ceiling. You can see how I've been squatting. <laughs> I'm definitely going to undo that. I'm going to change this camera so I don't have to keep my legs spread apart so you can see my ass. Uh, but that's going to happen later on. Well, that might be an hour or two move. I want you to get a view of this. I'm very proud of this setup. I took a lot of time to do this. Yolanda helped me clean these glasses. All of them got my, my goofy handle logo put right on them. Booyah. I love it. Um, yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. <clears throat> Next bottle. Now this one. Now I have tasted this. I'm very curious how this comes up against some of these others. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying the info, Zach. Yeah, I try to give as much as I can and stay engaged for the novices and the experts alike. Um, this is the Beaumont's 14 Year Reserve. Uh, shout out. I'm not gonna give his full name. Adam James is what he goes by uh, where I communicate with him, but I know his name has another component. But didn't get a chance to ask him. Uh, how he wanted to be referred to in this. So we'll just call him Adam James. He shipped this to me uh, from out of state. The 14-year reserve Beaumont. Now, this is floor five. We had two. We had three. We had four. And we have five. Hi, hey, is that, is that right? That's cool. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> All right. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, I love that fact. And this one I don't have info on, so I'm going to go ahead and switch through the Belmont and the, uh, what one was this? The Belmont and the Crowd, I'm going to go ahead and switch through. So that way I have the one I don't know anything about, and then the Floor 2, the Floor 3, the Floor 4, and the Floor 5. Because these are all, I think they're all either 14 or 15 years also. Now, they're going to be different warehouses, but you can only, you know, control so many factors when you're talking about single barrels. And to have, you know... Things that are, between, you know, within a year, we'll say within a year and a half of the same age, uh, and they're all in, you know, different warehouses. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Anyway, floor five, it was uh, barreled 11-21-2005, bottled 127-2020, uh, warehouse L, Rick 2. Now, these are, again, these are all at 60 proof, um, but... I was really excited when I broke this open and had a taste for this uh, for this video because it was unbelievably delicious. And that might have something to do with the Rick House. It might have something to do with some other factor. They may have just got a honey barrel. Uh, or it could have had something to do with, and I was kind of thinking about this. I want to make sure these labels are all facing the same way. I was thinking about this before. You know, the 15-year barrels have gotten a lot of uh, notoriety. People that are looking for barrel picks are looking for the 15 year picks. And so a 14 year barrel may have popped up in the selection cycle and either been overlooked by people who wanted the big year statement or it may have been a, a, a recent addition. And because it, they, they, you know, the, the committee that was allowing these barrels to go to the selection process may have assumed like, oh, somebody will pick it once it hits 15 and somebody snagged it up based on taste before that. Hard to say. What I will say is it's delicious. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to trying that next to some of these others. So thanks again, Adam. Now we're getting into some of the samples. These are a little bit trickier to pour. I'm going to do it this way if I can. Um, this is the Knob Creek. Now, all, the only info I have on these is on the bottles themselves. That's the Heritage. This is called Boomtown 5. And this is, uh, where's the other one? I'm going to keep these all together as well. And this is Mike's. Uh, now, all three of these came from Ryan Kitchen. Shout out Ryan if he's watching. Uh, Ryan was uh, nice enough to do a little exchange with me. Uh, I don't remember which Facebook group I met Ryan through, but one of the groups I had been talking about some tasty whiskeys, he said, yeah, man, send me some samples and I'll send you some back. I sent him some samples and he sent me back a couple cool things. He sent me back. One of the things he sent was a Four Roses pick, uh, but he sent back three uh, very good Knob Creek picks after I believe I sent him the rural input. He said, well, if you like that, I got some really good stuff for you. So looking forward to trying that. 
So I think the next one, yeah, put mics into a glass, a bottle, a glass. What am I talking about? Huh? What? Huh? Fuck it. Um, oh, trying not to swear as much. It's hard for me, guys. I love swearing. I love cursing. It's great. Um, but I need to be able to not do it because I don't want to get demonetized if I ever am able to monetize this stuff. At this point, it doesn't matter because I don't have a thousand subscribers. I'm not bringing in that kind of viewership. Maybe I will soon. Share it with your friends. Hopefully we can get there. But if we do, I can't keep saying some of these curse words. I was reading policies on YouTube, and you can swear every once in a while. Um, but they don't like a bunch of them back to back to back. They don't like it with, with uh, what they call like a high frequency. And they don't like it early in the video, which I think is interesting. They want you to be able to get away from the video before some swear words start being dropped. That actually makes sense to me. A uh, little kid starts watching the video, gets a minute in, and the parents say, no, 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 okay, give me that. That makes sense. Back to the action. Although if a kid's watching this, they got other problems. <laughs> We're drinking whiskey, guys. If you have children watching this, those children have other problems. S&V liquor. Now... Big shout out here, Uncle Dave Whiskey. Uh, he's in the chat. Big shout out, Uncle Dave Whiskey, because he put all the info on the label. I love it. That's what I love to see. I usually handwrite it really shittily uh, with, uh, you know, a, a magic, not a magic marker, a Sharpie and, uh, 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 you know, a piece of scotch tape or, or not scotch tape. Damn, words are hard. I usually use a Sharpie and a piece of, uh, Masking tape, that's the one. Yeah, there it is. The S&V Pick Warehouse and Floor 5, Rick 21. Uncle Dave knows what's up. I have an actual Uncle Dave. That kind of makes me laugh every time I say Uncle Dave. Uh, <laughs> it's almost 15 years. Barreled 6, 1305. Bottled 1, 10, 20. S&V Liquors, Spring 2020. Awesome stuff. Yeah, I... My writing is awful, often difficult to read. I totally, totally can feel you there, Uncle Dave. Uh, yeah, Zach, there might be some thirsty kids out there, but uh, I've, we've got other endeavors that are for the kids, not whiskey drinking. The teenagers will love this. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, I bet Nate's not in the chat yet. Nate Cooper, a frequent flyer in the sample department on this channel, sent me a long time ago. I think this might have been in may have been in 2019. If it wasn't, it was in January. It was a while back. He sent me um, a Knob Creek Cast Strength Straight Rye. It says Batch 2 barreled in 2010. 127 proof. Warehouse A. I'm really, really skeptical about that proof statement. I don't think I've ever heard of that on a Knob Creek rye. Now, maybe I'm missing something. Uh, maybe it's because I'm assuming this is an Ohio State pick, and they might do things a little different. But this is also the first of the ryes. Uh, so just so I don't get myself confused, I'm going to put the ryes up a wee bit on the table. Number 11. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> oh, God, guys. This is going to be a real a real hell of a thing. The Belmont Beverage is rye. You saw the Belmont bourbon. Now, here's the Belmont rye. I've also been very happy that I've actually been able to open these. I've had trouble in the past. Sometimes these Knob Creek corks can be a little difficult to open. I've actually been pretty consistent with my pours. I'm pretty happy with that. There's a couple of lighter ones and a couple heavier ones, but uh, that could have been a lot worse. Again, no information on this. It says 115 proof. Finally, the twice barreled rye. There's actually some floaties in this. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. They didn't filter this super great, I guess. Uh, I'm not mad about it. looks like let me get 
slip up here. Looking at the chat here, it looks like Daniel Brown, I have that rod cast strength. It's 1.7 proof. All right. You know what, uh, Daniel, if you could, um, I'm, okay. My computer said my connection was unstable. Hopefully that doesn't keep happening. If, uh, if you could, Daniel, send me a, a photo of that on Facebook, Instagram, my email, wherever, I'd love to have that just because I've never seen it before. I'd be really curious to see how that looks on the label. That's, that's totally foreign to me. Um, like I, I haven't had a lot of their rye picks, I will be honest. I'm much more of a bourbon than a rye drinker, um, as you can see by the weight on the table. Uh, but, you know, I'm, that's that's really interesting to me. Um, Trevor, I just looked and I have a Belmont beverage pick I got in Fort Wayne. I will drink that along with you when you give your thoughts on it. All right, cheers. Cheers, Trevor. That'll be fun. Um, you might have to get that sooner rather than later because the first one I've got in the lineup is the Belmont bourbon. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, just so I can point this out, I will periodically be reaching for this, which is my saving grace for tonight. This will allow me to drink all of this whiskey and not feel like garbage tomorrow morning at work. I also have my handy dandy bourbon wheel. Now, you're not going to see a lot of drinking professionals actually using these wheels. I think that's a mistake. I think that showing people how to do this means showing them how they will learn. And I can drink this and tell you different notes and pull different notes out, but it's not helpful to understand my process. Because my process then is just in my brain. But it's the same process I'm using with the wheel. Now, what is the bourbon wheel? Take a look. It's small font, I know. Full of different notes, different flavors, and different categories. Wood, grain, sweet, aromatic, spice, fruit, and floral. Breaks them down further into wood, nut, uh, malt, you know, brown or savory spices, fruits, or floral notes. And then gives you specific flavors. I keep this on hand always because when you look at the word, it makes the association much more real in your brain. You can think of a concept of like, well, do, what, do I like lemon? Do I like lime? Do I like berries? What do those taste like? You can do that in your brain, but it takes some time and it becomes much more of a long drawn out process to get a lot of flavor notes until it just becomes muscle memory and just rote. Um, my memory is not particularly good, so it's not going to become rote for me chances are. But if I look at this, I can just walk along the wheel and uh, very, very, very quickly figure out like, nope, not getting that. Nope, not getting that. Oh, yeah, it tastes like that one. And, uh, you know, I'm going to figure out a way to put this on this very, very crowded table. But I don't want it to be too interfering with all of the beautiful things we've got out here. Okay, perfect. I can glance down at it as needed. Let's get into some whiskey, guys. <clears throat> now, I think I'm going to sort of break this up into little patches because if I tried to do, you know, even, even just the bourbons, if I tried to do nine nosings in a row, then nine tastings in a row, it's going to become all jumbled. It's going to become a mess. Uh, so I think I'll start with just wet my whistle with the Belmont, get into the swing of things. Then I'll do this grouping right here of uh, the two, the three, the four, and the fifth floor. And then I'll jump into the samples, and then blindly I'll do the rye. So that gives me like one, two, three, four, three and a half little batch runs uh, to get a sense of what I'm tasting and what's going on here. So go ahead with the first pour. Now this is the Belmont without any notes on it. Oh, man. These smell so freaking good, guys. It's just it's hard to believe how good they smell. First off, I'm actually getting a little bit of sourness on this, which I didn't expect. It's sort of a sweet and sour combo. Definitely getting the sweetness of the of the malt syrup. 
maybe a little bit of molasses. Big brown sugar notes, though, and big, um, big cinnamon, big brown sugar. It's that kind of pour. A lot of these are going to be that kind of pour. They're going to be big, sweet, brown cinnamon, sugar, spice. Uh, they're definitely going to get some woodiness in these older pours. These are almost all 14 or 15 years. This first one, I think, is actually only nine years, though, so this should be a little bit less woody, oaky bomb uh, than the rest, but uh, it'll still have some of that. I'm actually getting a hint of uh, clove and maple syrup on this, too. Joe, what wellers is over your left shoulder? Answer later if you want. Uh, I've got a couple of different 107 antique picks up there. I've got the standard Weller antique in the back, and then I've got the Big Red Liquors pick right here from last November, and on the other side I've got the Crown Liquors Archie pick. Um, so they're all 107s. Matter of fact, I think the only Weller I have on my shelf right now is the 107. Uh, I've got, though, this is a great segue, I've got some samples from the Naptown Bourbon Club of Weller CYPB, Create Your Perfect Bourbon, uh, Weller 12, and then I've got the Weller Antique, and I've got a sample from Miranda of the Weller Special Reserve. Shout out Miranda Callahan. Uh, I'm going to do a series of videos where I do all of those Weller products side by side. Oh, I forgot one, the Weller Foolproof. I've also got one of those. Shout out again, Naptown Bourbon Club. So that's going to be a fun Weller line that will be a series of videos. I'm not going to do that as a live stream. I'm going to do that as a series of videos that are going to be released concurrently back to back to back. But, you know, I was thinking about this, actually. I was thinking about what can I put in the middle of... Oh, I'm glad you kind of pointed that out because... Uh... God, I keep getting this unstable connection notice. I hope you all can keep seeing me and keep hearing me because I keep getting this unstable connection notice and I don't know what the hell that's about. Um, anyway, with the Weller lineup I'm hoping to do in the future, uh, I could definitely uh, I could definitely use the Weller Antique line as a sample for a video, uh, a side-by-side -side of the store picks before I go back into the standard videos on the Tuesday, or the Wednesdays and the Fridays. So there's like a sour cherry note on this for sure. All right, well, if the if the freezing is fine, that's – freezing a little bit's okay. It can happen. Okay. I might buffer a little and come back on. Thanks all for clearing that up in the chat. We'll see how it goes. If shit really gets bad, uh, I do have a cable. I don't know if this computer can, can take an Ethernet cable without a dongle of some stupid kind, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, it looks like Daniel has sent me a label of the Cast Strength Rye on Instagram. So, but yeah, I'll get this interesting sour cherry note out of this Belmont. And maybe even, uh, <laughs> they conceal the image on Instagram when you don't have, uh, the right connections with somebody and they send you a photo. That's smart. I get that. <laughs> there could be some weird. But, uh, <laughs> well, look at that. That's great to see. Down there at the bottom. I'm showing you a screen on the screen. It's like an inception, guys. That's cool. I like that they're adding more information to those rye labels, too. That's cool. The sourness is really interesting and really throwing me off on this. All right, let's go ahead and give it a taste. The wonderful, delicious, sweet honey. Honey and, and, and like baking spice, and then it fades away. You get this hint of pepper, and this really good Kentucky hug, this warmth that comes down through your chest. It's a little bit of uh, a little bit of wood on the finish of this, but not that much. I think the nine year is a lot more gentle. The whole process of it's more gentle. It's 
You definitely taste the grain, though. This is a whiskey that doesn't shy away from that grain flavor on the front of the palate. Um, it's not that bad, though. It, like That doesn't deter me as much as it might on other whiskey around that. That's just that's just tasty stuff. That's just tasty stuff. This is hard to beat. You get this wonderful like blackened oak on the palate. Ah, oh, it's good. Okay. One more take. I have to pace myself or I'm gonna die. Definitely honey. Slight bitterness, like a lemon zest. You get a little citrus, a little bitter. And then this really great, I guess it's like a walnut. It's a bitter nuttiness. Um, that's something I need to do at some point is go through um, different woody notes or different nut notes and uh, figure out if I can uh, get some like, you know, a lineup of actual almonds, actual pecans, actual walnuts and see how they taste. It's hard to sort of hammer down what exactly I'm meaning and I want to make sure that... Uh, my memory on those is correct. Um, and there's no better way to do that than in the present moment. That's something I really would like to do in a future video. Uh, I probably won't start with the nuts. I will probably start with baking spices because that's one that I've gotten a lot of flack for in the past. Uh, I really am sensitive to the nutmeg flavor, or so I think. Test it out. Now, we've got second floor, third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor. Bow, 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 bow. Let's give those a nosing, and then I'll come back and taste them all. Oh, so beautiful. Don't like that nose as much. That's, <laughs> these are wonderful pours. Okay, 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 so. Let's, let's break this down a little bit. So the first one, Crown Liquors, barrel pick. Second one, Cap and Cork, floor three. Third one, Rural Inn, floor four. Fourth one, Beaumont 14th, floor five. The Beaumont is the only one with any like actual uh, fruit note in it, which is, in my experience, pretty uncommon for these Knob Creek picks. Um, but, uh, I really like fruit notes. I'm a sucker for it. So smelling it in this is really cool. <sighs> Number two here, I really didn't get much off the nose. It's way, way softer, way quieter than the others. The proof is still as high. Yeah, still as high proof. Still a 14 year bottling. Um, and I would say otherwise, it's like, well, it's brand new, it needs to open up. But this one was opened, like, the day before. So these two have been opened almost the exact same amount of time, and neither of them very long. I got a hair coming from my mustache into my nose. Not fun. So this one... Very, very subtle on the nose. I'm getting a... Uh, Mostly just like a soft toasted oak. Not getting a whole lot. I mean, a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of sweetness, but it's pretty quiet. Um, all right, so the Walmart by my job had that first nine year single barrel reserve price wrong for about two months. And I took full advantage of that every week. They had it priced as the regular small batch. Hey, man, cheers to that. That's a good day when you find that kind of thing happening. I, uh, I recently had the uh, same thing happen with Maker's 46th. Uh, Maker's, no, no. The Maker's Mark Cast Strength was priced like a standard Maker's uh, at a local uh, Meyer. I won't tell you which one because they quit doing it. <laughs> and I don't want to put them on blast. Uh, but I took full advantage of that. You better believe it. Oh, man. Okay. A lot more caramel. So the, the, this is the Crown Liquors. The Crown Liquors, the Floor 2 had a lot more caramel on the nose. A lot, lot more. It's almost like it's all butterscotch and caramel. It's very sweet and creamy. A 
look weird on this. I think it's because I'm lit weird. You ever look at yourself on camera and go, what is happening right now? I need to stop doing that. I'll look at you guys on the camera and in the chat. Let's let's stick with this here. I'm not even drunk yet. I'm already fucking hallucinating. Okay. I love the vanilla. I love the caramel. It's sweet. It's this is to me very prototypical Knob Creek. It's sweet caramel, baking spice. But I also am getting a little bit of fruit. Um, I'm trying to place it. Like some sort of stewed fruit, maybe like stewed peaches or something. Yeah, no, it's not peaches. Maybe raspberries. Maybe like stewed raspberries. Some sort of berry component. Let me go back now to the uh, cap and cork. Yeah, it's so flat. I get none of the butterscotch. I get none of the fruit. Like, are these the same amounts? Like, what is going on right now? Same glasses, same amounts? Something super weird is going on with this, guys. So flat. Okay. You know, maybe... You know, maybe it's a sleeper. Maybe the taste will really stand out. And I'll be like, holy crap. This tastes amazing. No wonder they were trying to hide it from me. By the way, if you have anybody wondering what this is, this is my microphone. Yeah. Not hiding the ball here, guys. Not hiding the ball. If I take a couple steps back, I can actually... Uh, stand straight. So that might be a good reprieve. But I know I might be out of focus. Something's going to be out of focus, but uh, y'all just have to deal with that. Again, this one's very classic. Lots of vanilla, lots of caramel. Less caramel than the first one. I will say that. Um, this is the Rural Inn pick. Floor four. I'm getting more vanilla than I get on either of these, uh, less caramel. Um, uh, no, there are not some cap and corks in Indianapolis, Trevor. Uh, had a good friend, um, Jacob. Shout out, uh, J is it Jacob Johnson? Yeah, Jacob Johnson. I want to make sure I remember which Jacob. I know a lot of Jacobs. I don't want to get people's names wrong. I've done it before, and it's embarrassing. Jacob Johnson. I'd rather look at the list and be embarrassed by my bad memory than say the wrong name. That's way more embarrassing to me. Jacob Johnson <laughs> picked up a bunch of Cap and Cork store picks, brought them down to Indy, and sold them at cost. It was a good, good gesture on his part. Um, just helping dudes out. This one, I'm getting a lot more woodiness uh, on the nose than the other two. It's, a, it's like a, uh, a charred oak. Good stuff. I like the nose on this. Finally, the old floor five, the Beaumont, Beaumont, Beaumont 14 average. These glasses are going to slide off. They're not, they're not designed for looking down and up all the time. They just fall right off. Yeah, man, that. I get a uh, honey crisp apple. I get cherry, sweet cherry. Lots of honey. Maybe some peach. Just a hint of peach. Maybe just a hint of blueberry. 
very fruity, very fruity. I love it. I, I love it. You still, now when I say very fruity, I think I should clarify a little bit. Like this is not smell like a fruit basket. I've got one that smells like a fruit basket. It's not this one, but it's all in comparison. You know, it's all compared to these others. This is incredibly fruity, but compared to all whiskey generally, this is not particularly fruity. It's one of those weird, um, you know, point of reference questions. Um, but yeah, vanilla, honey, sweet, really good. Really good, folks. Really good. Maybe a little maple syrup on this. I'm not getting the butterscotch at all. There's no butterscotch. I've got the fruitiness. I've got a hint of the wood. I've got uh, a little bit of uh, baking spice, the vanilla, but I'm not getting that caramel. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the nose the first time. I'm going to go through rapid fire, taste, bam, 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 little nips, and then I'm going to come through and do them all slower with some detail. Oh, man, and going back to this one, after that fourth one, this smells sour in a weird way. All right, let's taste it. First impression, and I did not expect this, the Rural Inn was my favorite. Um, these two were almost identical. And um, I actually am going to go back and look through them with more long form, but I think this one might have been closer to these two. But this one stood out. While this one smelled the fruitiest, this one tasted the fruitiest. I got a lot more fruit note out of this. Now, we'll break it down and get a little bit more specific, but I think that might be um, – there might be something to that. It's gonna be a long night. If you saw me open this, you know you'll know where I'm at based on where this is at. This is gonna be finished. I guarantee I'm gonna finish this tonight. Maybe on camera. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. I may have to put a pee break intermission in this live stream. Uh, okay. All right. What are you guys drinking? Tell me what you're drinking in the chat. I want to know. I want to know what y'all sipping on. Sound like Trevor was sipping on the cap and cork with me. What are you guys sipping on? Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I want to hear it. I want to know. You know, I had a frustrating experience today, guys. I, uh... I was trying to film a series of videos this morning. Thought they went okay. Uh, shot four videos. Well, four, I had four different pours. They weren't four videos separately, but uh, um, the uh, are you sipping the same Knob Creek pick that I'm sipping right now, or that I have to sip, Uncle Dave? Let me know. Um, <clears throat> but the. Uh, the audio for all four of the pours didn't work. Uh, I, it just, I, it, you know, I've had it in the past where um, I've had the audio not work, and uh, essentially all I needed to really do was just try to clean up what audio existed because I use an auxiliary microphone, and if I just don't, if that doesn't get plugged in, the camera I'm recording on has a microphone. Well, for some reason. I couldn't record on the microphone. I didn't pick up anything on that mic on the camera or my auxiliary. So I have dead air on all four of these reviews. 
that's not a big deal for most things. I usually don't drink the entire sample. I'm usually given two ounce samples uh, and I'm able to just shoot it twice. And so that's what I'm gonna do with most of them. But one of them, one I was really excited about shooting, it's a Naptown Bourbon Club video I was hoping to release on Tuesday, or sorry, Wednesday, Tuesday for the Patreon. Uh, that's a little secret for people who don't know. If you're in the Patreon, you can get early access. Um, I'll be revamping the Patreon for July 1st. Video is going to come out on that uh, on July 1st, probably. I'll, I'll talk with the patrons about it in a private live stream before then. Um, so I'll, I'll say this, like I said, after the uh, stream, but if you're watching and you're in the Patreon, um, the last day, J June 30th, uh, I'm going to do a live stream that evening. Um, I'll figure out the exact time and post it, but it's going to be a Patreon exclusive only for members of the Patreon, but it will be for all members of the Patreon not just uh, any specific tier because it's going to be breaking down the new features of the of different tiers in the Patreon account. Um, it'll give you a chance to ask questions, to you know have suggestions if you think I should add something or change something. Uh, it's going to be a, basically a town hall uh, where we also get to drink whiskey. A little two for one. Anyway, so one of the pours that I only had an ounce of that I drank the entirety of during my video shoot was a 2018 Thomas H. Candy. I was very excited to try it out. It's going to be a Naptown Bourbon Club exclusive. <sighs> I have some of the audio for that one. Got about six minutes of audio for that, and then it cuts out in the middle. So I've got an idea. I'm going to play around with it, try to make it fun, try to make it work, try to make it still informative and still worth something like I try to make these videos. Um, we'll see how it goes. You will probably see it in the future, but uh, that's not going to be the first thing I release under the NBC label. So uh, we, we've, i got some other things that are coming up soon. Those Weller line will be from NBC, so you'll see those come out before that. So let me take a look here. Knob Creek pick, duh. Yeah, nursing some Eagle Rare. Thanks, Miranda. Shout out, Zach. Um, Trevor the Belmont. Now he's moved to the old Forster 1920. That's a good pick. Wild Turkey 101 Mint Julep. Shout out, Joe. That sounds tasty, my man. I actually have some fresh mint. Yolanda's been growing fresh mint in the front yard. Um, I need to make that into a julep. I got to do that. That's got to be a video, man. I, I, it might be uh, – I got. I definitely want to shoot a Sazerac cocktail video soon, so I may have to do a mint julep video as well at that same time because mint julep's tasty stuff. Tasty stuff. I'm not one of those whiskey snobs that only drinks it neat. Nah, man. Cocktails are good. What are you going to do? A hot day? Hell yeah. Let's go back and taste the first one. This is the Crown Liquors Floor 2 15 year. Right off the bat, it's very woody. This is just super oaky bomb. Mid palate, though, gets sweeter. I get the honey. And um, I get honey, vanilla, uh, corn syrup, mid palate. Ooh, and a slight herbal finish, uh, slight bitter, slight herbal finish. But the, the first thing you get is just hit with wood. Let's try it again. The woodiness is almost too bitter. It's very bitter on this particular bottle. Um, it's just tons of oak. Tons of oak. Little bit of that tannin, bitter barrel tannin. Ah, oh, that's sad, Steve. Steve, Steve's uh, sipping water. Steven's sipping water before his night shift. Uh, that's the right call. Uh, but that does suck, my man. Yeah, that one's kind of. Uh, it's not particularly complex. I kind of gave you what I was getting out of it. So let's go ahead and jump to the cap and cork. Mm. 
not. It's oaky, but it's not as oaky. I don't get that bitter barrel tannin flavor. I get a more subtle bitterness, more like an herbal bitterness, and it's later. It's in the mid-palate into the finish. It's not right off the bat. This thing, right off the bat with this one, I was getting super sugar, or I'm sorry, super woody barrel bitter. Uh, this one, It's like a honey oak. It's sweet and it's woody. A little bit of cinnamon. A little bit of vanilla. Ooh, that oak just lingers so perfectly in this pool. The cap and cork, it's very balanced. Um, sweetness and then like a long lingering oakiness. Oh, that's really something. That herbal note in the mid palate is really good in this. I, I I have mixed feelings about herbal notes in whiskey. Um, you know, herbal notes can be really overpowering, overbearing, uh, bitter. Sometimes I just can't deal with them. But this is uh, a really good presentation of an herbal note. Uh, it's hitting a lot of the right notes. Same thing over and over again, though. Doesn't change. Toasted wood, honey, a little bit of cinnamon. Mid palate, you get some of that herbal note. The herbal and the wood linger on into the finish. Get a little bit of black pepper on the tongue. Zero fruitiness in that. Zero. You know I keep it classy, obviously. I have waters on the floor in a gallon jug. I keep it classy. This is already, right off the bat, much, much lighter in its flavor profile. It doesn't have that super sharp, bitter barrel wood. It actually doesn't have the, uh, the woodiness at all, really. Yeah, that one's very sharp and astringent. Even though it's not as sharp and astringent as the first one, these two are that, that wood astringency is present. I don't get that in this at all. Honey, caramel. A little butterscotch. Ooh, a little pepper dance on the tongue in the mid palate. A lot of pepper actually in the mid palate. A lot of tingling. Sweet vanilla, and caramel. Maybe even some malty cereal notes, but they're subtle. Do I get any fruit on this? I don't think I do. That one is quite good, but um, I'm not sure. It, it's not as complex as the other one, and typically I prefer the complex pours, so that might put me in a bit of a quandary because I like it a lot, but it's because it's sweet. It's got a really significantly increased honey sweetness uh, compared to these other two. And I think what that really is, it's not actually the sweetness being higher. It's the woodiness being lower. This is not as oaky as these two were. Really interesting. All right. 
I'm going to scoot these back a little bit. Now this is the floor five. This is the new, my new pour from floor five. This one is from the Beaumont 14th anniversary. Let's get a taste. Oh, man. Okay. So, oh, there's a lot happening, guys. There's a lot happening in this. Okay. So, first things first, this one has a little bit of astringency that the rural end didn't have. This one, the rural end didn't have. So, of the four, only one of them, the rural end, didn't really have any of that heat burn astringency thing. Um, I would have otherwise said that's because it's been open the longest, but this one has been open at least as long, if not longer. So that kind of dispels that theory. Um, but these are very oaky. This one has the none of the astringency and none of the oakiness. This one has the astringent astringent. Oh, that word's getting hard to say. This one has the astringency, but not the oakiness. So I get a hint of oak on this, but nothing compared to these first two. But I get that sharpness that I like actually from these that I didn't get in this. As tasty as this is with its sweetness and its almost syrupy quality, it's lacking something and that's that sharpness that this one's bringing. Yeah, you get this very subtle, I don't even know what note that is. I guess it's like a subtle herb um, with a hint of like lemon zest bitterness, like it's the zestiness, which is um, like bitter citrus. I'm starting to feel this a little bit, and I'm not even halfway through. Oh no, what am I doing? Oh boy, this is what you came for. Just, just so you know, if this falls apart, this is this is on you as much as it's on me. I knew you guys wanted to see this. Oh, I'm gonna drink more water. Yes, absolutely, Trevor. You're 100 percent right. That gallon's gonna go away, but uh, there may be a, be a couple of pee breaks during this stream, uh, and y'all just gonna have to deal with that because I'm not taking you in there. It's not happening. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna be that intimate. That's for the uh, that's for the drink pro after dark. <laughs> Nobody wants that. It's a nuttiness. These two have the woodiness. This one has none of it. This one has the astringent with a nut quality. Um, I'm going to say pecan, pecan, pecan. Um, six too many samples. Yeah, yeah, you might be right about that. Oh, Trevor, I think Yolanda's off doing her own thing. I don't think she's going to be making a guest appearance today. All right, all right, all right. Last taste, I'll give you some real proper notes, and then we'll break them down again, and then we'll move to the next bunch. On nuttiness right off the bat moves into a sweet honey note. Caramel, malty cereal, butterscotch. Cinnamon, cinnamon early. You know what I found that surprised me? I really expected to find a lot more fruitiness in this, uh, this Beaumont. When I first tasted it, I got so much fruitiness. I'm getting a little bit um, a little bit of cherry on the mid-palate, but it's not very much. It's pretty subtle. 
<laughs> yeah, Mario the Drink Pro After Dark Special Edition glasses. Those will be very exclusive. <laughs> oh, man. That's a really cool experiment. It's a really cool experiment. I think of the four, my favorite is either the Rural Inn or the Beaumont. I'm not going to, well, very, very little. Okay. It's the tiniest of nips. There's a little bit of peanuttiness in this one. I think I'm going to go with the Beaumont. I think this is my favorite. Favorite, second favorite, kind of a tie. They're both good, but kind of a tie. Favorite, second favorite. This is more complex, and I like it. Trevor, have you noticed any big differences in the floors of aging? I expected to find a lot more difference than I did, Trevor. Good question. Um, I really, I mean, I the only, like, I don't know if this is a difference in the floors of aging. I would expect higher floors to be more woody. That is not what happened here. Floor two and three were woodier than floor four. And floor four was not as woody as floor five. But floor five was not as woody as two and three. Not all barrels on all floors are going to be the same amount of woodiness or the same amount of, you know, sweetness pulled from the oak or anything like that. That is going to vary. And because these are store picks, they're picked by individuals. So I have a sneaking suspicion that these two are off pro or on, excuse me, these two are very on profile. This is intentionally off profile. This is also intentionally off profile in a different direction that in fact makes it touch closer to the standard profile. Um, because you could lay out 10 barrels from floor five, from floor four, from floor three, and floor two, and probably find one in each of those that tastes the same and just put them all together and you'd have a two, three, four, five that were all identical. Um, the floors really did not make as much difference as I expected them to. Now I know, I will say this too, the Knob Creek Rick houses go up to floor nine. And so air circulation is a component of this. The uh, part of the reason the Four Roses picks that are floor six are so sought after is because the sixth floor is the highest floor. And I know that Big Red Liquors has done several hot, what they call hot house picks uh, from floor nine, um, Knob Creek floor nine picks. Um, I've had one in the past. It was quite good. It was a rye. Uh, and those really are oak bombs. And it could be the fact that, you know, floor five or floor six at a, big, at a Four Roses warehouse, that's the top. So the circulation is going to behave one way. Whereas floor five or six at Knob Creek is in the middle. And so the heat will not affect it in the same way. Circulation will not be the same. I'm just going to have to chalk it up to that because I really don't know what else it could be. All right. Now, now we've gotten through all of these. I'm somehow still alive. It's a good start. Now let's dig into these four. I'm going to take another drink of water right quick here. I'm probably dripping water everywhere. Y'all just going to have to deal with that. Okay. Now, here we have four basically mystery uh, Knob Creeks. The s and I got some info on it. It's similarly almost 15 years. Uh... Oh, and uh, somewhere in the chat, we had uh, more information about the floors and such. Let me, uh, let me see if I can't find that real quick here. It wasn't that far away. Yeah, this is floor five, Rick 21. I'm okay. Given that fact, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm essentially putting the floor five. Uh, this is uh, Uncle Dave's pick. Uh, I'm doing it now instead of at the end of this line because I just got a floor five and I want to compare that to a different floor five. Um, thanks, Trevor. Appreciate it. Oh, okay. 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 Wow. That s and Super sweet on the nose. 
I love the aromatics of this. Oh, they're so good. It's just, it's just cinnamon and caramel and just candy. Honey. Maybe a hint of some sort of nuttiness. It's just straight candy. Daniel, great question. This is a Four Roses single barrel, barrel strength store pick. Now it's important to remember that I'm only gonna point out the barrel strength ones because they have different labeling. Um, I do believe that you can find the floor on the regular picks, but I don't have one here as an example. Um, Dave, I'll tell, for people that aren't reading the chat, Daniel asked, I have a Four Roses pick, how do you tell the floor? Right here on this, you can see it says, MW Warehouse 7940. See that? That number four means it was from the fourth warehouse. Or I'm sorry, the fourth tier, which is the fourth floor. Um, there's sort of an easy shorthand for that, though. Uh, generally speaking, it's going to be barrel strength in the 61, 62, 63%. Usually 63% or higher is definitely going to be a tier six. But if you see a Four Roses store pick that's, you know, in the low to mid 60% alcohol range, good chances you're going to have a four or, or, sorry, a four or five or six, I guess. Probably a five or six, though, uh, there at the end of that labeling. Um, again, Daniel, if you've got uh, a picture of it and it doesn't match up with that, shoot me a message. Probably won't check it right now. I'll check that later. But I'd be happy to discuss it with you further, help you out, help you figure out what you're doing. Um, I know that I wish somebody had informed me of that earlier. I wish somebody had told me a lot of this information. I'm telling you guys before I found it out the hard way. Uh, I had a chance to, uh, did other people lose audio? Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me in the chat. All right, cool. Dan, I think Daniel can still hear me. Uncle Dave, I think it might just be you, my man. Some, put in the chat if you can hear me. All right, good. Thanks, Mario. Cool. Uh, sorry about your luck, Uncle Dave. Um, I'm tasting your pick, too. That really fucking sucks, bro. Uh, um, I, I may give him a minute. That really sucks. <laughs> oh, man. You can't. You can't. The poor guy, he went to the trouble of sending me this pick, fucking rushed it over. I can't do that to him. We're going to wait on that. We're going to wait on that. I'll I'll make a note. Yeah, I know. I I know, man. I can't help it. I can't help it. I love swearing way too much. Uh, I'm gonna wait on this. Hopefully, Uncle Dave can get his thing sorted, and we'll come back to it. Uh, just pretend like I'm on the smell. It smells so freaking good, though. Holy crap! All right. This is a Heritage. I'm going to do uh, Heritage, Boomtown 5, and then Mike's just back to back to back on the nose, and then give you some more detailed notes. Okay. Thanks, Trevor. Let's hope you're right. Um, yeah, it'll be a fun time, Daniel. It's coming up soon for sure, my man. So I think my favorite nose of the three. Is actually this third one. This third one's way, way different. It's super, super duper fruity. Grape Kool-Aid. Maybe. It's got that saccharine sugar sweetness and like an artificial grape note. Maybe like an artificial cherry note. I feel like fake fruit noses. And then that hint of bitterness that you get from like... <laughs> <laughs> Whew, excuse me. Can't breathe whiskey, folks. Um, that artificial sweetness that you get from... Uh, uh, you get this artificial bitterness from the sweetness and the artificial fruit flavors in a Kool-Aid. Very Kool-Aid-y. 
This one has a lot of butterscotch, but it's very honey sweet. Honey sweet and butterscotch. All right. And number two, number two is kind of suffering from the same thing that the floor three over here was suffering from, which is I'm not getting much on the nose. Now that could be just a function of, you know, I'm not getting a lot on the nose because it needs to open up more or, you know, it's just kind of hiding the secrets and you got to go dig them out. I don't know. There's probably a nuttiness though. It's got some of the sweetness, but the sweetness is so prominent in a lot of these that it doesn't stand out. All right. Uncle Dave, when you can hear me again, if you can hear me again, let me know in the comments, and I'm going to come back to your pour. Matter of fact, here in a minute, I might shoot him a message on Instagram because the uh, dude was nice enough to send me something. I want him to see me, see me trying it. All right, let's go in with heritage. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Now we're doing Boomtown. Boomtown 5. Glad to hear, Uncle Dave. Interesting. All right. Mike's. Oh. Oh, no. What in the hell? Something's wrong with Mike's. Oh, something's wrong with Mike's. Oh, a sour in a weird fucking way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Okay. All right. All right. That uh, that really got me, guys. That got me. That got me all messed up. Um. Ooh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There's something wrong with Mike. <laughs> Dang it, Mike. I totally agree. I totally agree. What the hell is Mike doing? Oh man, okay. All right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna prepare myself mentally and come back to that and um we'll talk about what went wrong. Uh because I think it's important to know what is going wrong when you taste something that is wrong. <laughs> Joe Joe uh spoiler Joe alert uh spoiler alert Joe Brown. Um uh let me give it a second here. It looks like I'm having an un Man, these these unstable connections. <sighs> Joe sent me a series of samples. I'm very much looking forward to trying some of those, Joe. Um, thanks again for sending them, brother. Uh, St. Cloud is one of them. And both he and uh, our good friend Nate had nothing positive to say about uh, St. Cloud. So I'll see if I agree. But let's focus on the good ones here first. And then we'll go back and do some triage on poor old Mike's. Okay, this one is the Heritage. It's very woody, but it's not astringent at all. So before when I was talking about some of these, right, I had these were woody and astringent. This was astringent, not really woody. This wasn't woody or astringent. This is the one that wasn't of these four. This is woody and not astringent. Astringent and not woody, woody and not astringent. Now, I hope everyone knows what the word astringent means. Um, I, I, I don't like to assume people know everything or they know nothing, but like if you don't know what the word astringent means, um, I think it's worth, it's worth mentioning because that's not a common word for most people in day-to-day -day life. Astringency is sort of a sharp, it can be sour, it can be a little bitter, but it's almost like a chemically taste. 
Uh, a good example of astringent for me is uh, there's two different ones I'll go with. Um, one is sort of like taking a bite of a of an old lemon that's almost rotted out. Uh, and the the other example is sort of like the irony like like organ meat. That's astringent in a very different way. I typically, I almost always, in fact, mean astringency like um, a sharp sourness, uh, like like you get from a lemon. When I'm talking about whiskey tasting, occasionally you do get some weird meaty stuff. But that's usually not in bourbon. Um, let's see. Daniel said, "Are the samples 60% ABV?" Um, the samples don't say what they are. The samples have nothing. The only information I have is the name Knob Creek, and then the name of the sample. I would presume that the samples are uh, 60%. The only things that I know are not 60%, this one right here, 115. This one right here, 100. Uh, but those are the rise. The rise are different. Uh, all of the bourbons, I believe, are 60%. Yeah, it's really interesting. You get that honey oak again. Honey oak, sweet, I love it. But this one is so quiet everywhere else. Everything else is very, very muted on this pour. It's super weird. Get honey oak. A little bit of pepper in the mid palate. A little bit of, um, it's not coffee, but it's um, maybe like a chocolate, like a cocoa bitterness. But it doesn't have any of the creaminess. None of the creaminess of, of chocolate. 